Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about DSPM or Data Security Posture Management. This time has been discussed a, a lot in the last few years and I thought I'll do some research and uh, I went through a couple of websites, uh, analyst white papers, lot of vendor products high level essentially whatever I could get gathered from uh, you know, the data security uh, vendors or DSPM vendors I've done that analysis and this is the outcome that you will see today so before we get started on DSPM we have to understand the basics of data security so as you know today data is stored at multiple places in multiple formats so it's getting stored on premises it is getting stored on cloud with CSPs and it is used by businesses to make day-to-day -day decisions for people who don't come from data security background a very simple example could be that an online retailer often maintains a track of the goods that are sold in a particular region they also track demographics of consumers who are buying this so this could be age sex uh, and uh, area, uh, product category, etc. Okay. So, example in a particular season, there could be higher or lower sales of a particular food, and online retailers often would want to uh, have the goods available in their nearest warehouse uh, to reduce the shipping or logistic cost. Okay. So, that, and then this helps them take business decision. Just giving you a very simple example on that now because such platforms or any businesses have have creating a critical part of data this could include complete details of end users address so for example my name phone number my email my home address my office address it's very common that retailers store all this data okay now it is important for these companies or businesses to secure this data uh, from un unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, disruption, modification, or destruction. So hence, data security is very critical for organization. Uh, and there are global regulations and mandates that these organizations have to adhere to to ensure that data is secure uh, to ensure compliance to these standards. Okay. Now, data security is not new it's been there for ages and some of the the common approaches that are taken by organizations is that they first start with building a data security governance and data risk assessment program what dsg essentially includes is a, a policies and controls for in enforcing data security essentially what they talk about is what is the critical data how it looks like where is it stored and who can have access to it and this would have components like doing a data risk assessment that involves identifying data assets, data classification that is all about identifying and classifying data assets according to their sensitivity level. Then identifying who has access to data assets and what can they do with this data. Then identifying threats that could impact the organization's data assets, understanding the risks so once these threats have been identified, it's important to understand the likelihood of these threats and the impact that they can have. This helps the organization to prioritize the risks that they face. Okay, So that's the first part. The second part is the controls or tools and or things like training that are important for the organizations to do. So key technologies that are there for some time are data discovery platforms essentially these platforms scan data repositories both structured and structured to understand data types and their data owners there is a technology available for data masking and obfuscation that hides the actual data using modified content uh, like characters or uh, numbers then there's irm information rights management that enforces information policies by allowing the author of electronic documents like word documents pdfs etc or emails to choose how recipients can use and share the information so i can tell who can open my email or the attachment that i've uh, sent then data leakage prevention that prevents the accidental leak of uh, data database activity monitoring these platforms read audit trail or activity done in the databases and understand what is the impact of these activities data encryption 
which is all about making data unreadable for unauthorized users data access governance and monitoring and analytics so essentially these platforms understand access rights and ownership across data stores a lot of im vendors provide these products also data access management so these essentially allow attribute based access control or a back and then for the last few years data security platforms have also gotten popular and what they do is they aggregate data protection requirements across data type storage silos and ecosystems and they aggregate individual mature technologies so most of these technologies that i've mentioned dsps can either integrate with them or a single dsp can provide all these technologies so that organizations don't have to look into multiple uh, products to drive their data security requirements okay so it helps you transition from a silo technology to one platform with most of the use cases for data security and compliance okay now who's providing them these platforms are there there have been a lot of companies over the years i remember my first data security way back in 20 20 uh, 2010 uh, where this company would uh, encrypt uh, the file folder shares and database uh, says uh, it was essentially a database uh, security product and a file security product uh, and it was very popular at that point of time now also some of the data security use cases are provided by the sasi or ssc vendors uh, that have casb and dlp capabilities they understand apps they understand uh, what uh, data looks like people can define patterns and then they can do some of the use cases of discovery and uh, alerting or blocking in case any sort of sensitive data flows through these platforms okay so these are the current approaches that are there in the data security now let's go back to today's topic dspm data security posture management so what dspm does is it understand your data landscape and risk associated with it what that means it's what's the data where is it residing who has access to it this includes apps and users how is it being used and what are the risks associated with data assets and data pipeline okay so let's look at that in detail so key capabilities of dspms include data discovery and classification so they can scan both structured and structured data stores across csps and on premise data centers typically it would vary on the vendor but csps are more popular they are easier to integrate with and they can integrate with with thing with uh, data repositories like fireshells nas uh, sifs drives uh, data lakes like microsoft azure data lake google bigquery uh, amazon redshift cloud based object storage collaboration platforms like dropbox onedrive google drive etc okay they also have dag or data access governance capabilities to understand entitlement and ownership related to the data they also monitor data flow analysis and usage they monitor security posture of the data store and then they have workflows for remediation of issues to manage exposure and data risk so example if they find a repository that has a sensitive data then they also check permissions of this data who owns this data and what is the configuration of the this the drive itself is it open to all or is it open to selective users and then if it, there are certain issues find you can run a workflow that will automatically fix the permissions for this issue okay that's just a very basic example now typically how this would work is this technology dspm technology can discover identify and categorize and then map data consistently across csps and on prem data stores as i've said it can analyze ongoing data flows and data pipelines that connect to those repositories okay it can also discover shadow data repositories and unsecured data pipelines so shadow data repositories are essentially repositories that are created without organization approval so example some developer decides that hey, i want to try this new feature uh, on an app that he is developing and he uploads some sensitive data uh, without any approvals in place just to test the logic of in that application that is an example of shadow data repository okay dspm can also look at access lock and understand if the application or the user is accessing a particular data store how many times it is, is it getting access so essentially the frequency the content it is type, trying to access and then look for specific patterns in the data these technologies and some of them can identify data residency related issues also for so example if data is getting stored in a particular region that it is 
not supposed to get stored at. So example, uh, GDPR mandates the data of the European Union to be stored in Europe and if it is getting stored in a different country, that would be flagged by the DSPM platform. And DSPM platforms also under understand the misconfiguration related to data repository. So things like open permissions on file shares, okay. uh, uh, accounts uh, that are present on those account uh, on on those uh, uh, repositories, then these platforms understand data lineage. So data lineage is the process of tracking the flow of data through an organization systems and apps. So essentially it understands where the data comes from, how is it used and where it goes. Okay. The idea behind data lineage is that the data security posture for each data platform has to be continuously assessed, assessed and validated for business purposes. Okay. Now typically the DSPM product will uh, be available either as a SaaS platform or a non-premise uh, platform and certain components that can either discover the SaaS assets or CSP based data stores or an on-premise connector that can uh, understand the on-premise data stores. Okay, they, In the backend they would want to use the graph uh, technology, machine learning, metadata management and categorization techniques to identify specific data sets. They are also integ uh, integrating with IAM, SaaS and SASE platforms to connect who has access to specific SaaS apps and which data sets are used by these SaaS apps themselves. They also have notification alerts and workflows. Okay, So that was DSPM. Now who is using it? It is typically used by IT users, departments uh, that own applications and that data security teams, compliance teams and executive leaderships to get a visibility of of the data posture. Okay. Now some of the common questions that I get are what is the difference between DSPM and DLP? So the focus of DSPM as you would have understood by now is that it looks into the security posture of the data and the data assets. Okay. Uh, DLP's focus is to prevent the accidental leakage of data. DSPM versus DSP is the second thing I get asked on. So DSP is essentially a broader term, data security platform, and it includes DSPM and other technologies like DLP for data security with eventual goal of data protection. So DSP would have multiple technologies natively or they will integrate with multiple other technologies like DSPM to give an overall data security protection uh, capability and as you know DSPM focuses on security posture of data assets. DSPM versus CSPM which is so CSPM cloud security posture management focuses on the posture of the cloud infra okay and whereas DSPM focuses on the security posture of the data assets okay no matter where they reside. So that was DSPM uh, for you. Uh, with that, thank you so much for listening to this content. I hope you find it useful. And if you find it useful, please share with your friends uh, and anybody who wants to understand cybersecurity in a simpler way. Uh, it helps the algorithm to recommend this content and more users are likely to listen to this. With that, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.